everybody. I'm Kathy Cass Stevens, the Marketing Director at Star of Rock Lodge and Conference Center, and we're here today at beautiful Star of Rock State Park to see the beauty of this amazing National Historic Landmark. And right now, we're on top of Lover's Leap, and I'll tell you about that legend in just a second. But as we look over this way, you'll see Star of Rock off in the distance. So if you're hiking here at Star of Rock, you always know that landmark with the flagpole on top is Star of Rock. Star of Rock is one of four bluffs that sticks up out of the Illinois River. The first bluff has Star of Rock Lodge on it, and that's where I work. And there we have a conference center and a restaurant and a hotel. It's a lovely place that's open to the public year-round. The next bluff is Star of Rock, and Star of Rock got its name many, many years ago, and it's an Indian legend about two rivaling Indian tribes. One had a tribal council, and they thought that the other had killed their chief, and they went for retribution and revenge. Now, that's an Indian legend that has been passed down through the years back then, and even till, till today, Indians don't keep written records, so that's, that's why it's a legend. Now we're on the third bluff, and it's called Lover's Leap, and that is also a legend about two people who fell in love, and they were from different tribes. Their parents didn't want them to be together, and supposedly they leapt to their death. That's a sad story, but right over this bluff are many, many happy stories. 2.1 plus million visitors come here per year, growing numbers every year to see this amazing destination that you just don't expect to see among the flatlands and cornfields of Illinois. We have waterfalls, seasonal waterfalls that are just stunning, canyons, bluffs, flowers, wildlife, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. In a minute, we're going to head that way to the next of four bluffs here, and that one is called Eagle Cliff. And so let's head out to Eagle Cliff right now. So Star of Rock, like I said, has many fun things to do, whether you're at the lodge or hiking in the park. But as we hike on this trail, let's talk about the first thing we should always talk about, and that is safety first. Safety is number one when you're hiking because we always want everybody to be safe and be aware of the park rules, like there's no wading or swimming or rock climbing here at the park. So that's what we always want to pay attention to. So now we're heading down this lovely boardwalk. As you can see, we're not on a mud trail. We're not on a sandstone trail. We're on wood. And so that makes it really nice for hiking. But just so you know, it doesn't mean that you can bring strollers here because there are a lot of stairs along the way. So you want to be careful when you're hiking. And if you're hiking with children, always take them by the hand because it is a little bit dangerous when you're off the boardwalk. Now we have many, many things to see and do here. So if you're familiar with the state of Illinois and you know that the state Let's take Bird, the cardinal. You'll see a cardinal here at any point in time. Maybe you'll see one here when we're looking out at this overcliff, this overlook. Out here as we look out, we see Leopold and Plum Island. We're going to get a better view of that in just a minute when we get a, a clearer view from Eagle Cliff. And here right in front of us, you'll see trees like oaks and maples and pines. And this is a great place for outdoor education where you can teach your children the state tree of Illinois, which is an oak tree. You might see a white-tailed deer. We actually have our first question. What's our first question, Dan? Uh, Erica asks, how many miles of trails are there at the park? 13.4 miles of hiking trails here at Star Rock State Park. And then we have a park nearby called Matheson State Park. And they have over three miles of hiking trails there. One of the most fun things to do here at Star Rock is called a mega hike. We have two per year, one in the spring and one in the fall. And our great activities director, Edna Doherty, created the path that takes you the best way. So this is one of the best ways. We're walking in shade. We're walking downstairs whenever we can instead of having to climb upstairs. So that's what I recommend. So hiking here, if you've never been here before, you really should begin with a guided hike. We have guided hikes from the lodge every single weekend year-round. We also have hikes that come that leave from the State Park Visitor Center on key weekends during the year, like the first day hike, January 1st, Eagle Watch weekend, Fall Colors, Waterfall and Canyon Tours, and Wildflower Pilgrimage weekend. We also have um, hikes that team up with our trolleys. As you can see, as we walk along the path today, there are a lot of people hiking here at Star Rock. So you want to be careful and courteous to those who are hiking around you and always stay to the right so that people who are hiking can pass you on the left. And that way, they, the slower hikers keep to the right. Before, between now and where we get to Eagle Cliff, I just want to tell you, too, that whether you're hiking spring, summer, winter, or fall, you should always have some really important things in your backpack. And that's why I brought one with me today. So I have um, water, insect repellent, sunblock, 
some tissues, a first aid kit, right here in my Hike It Like It backpack. So you just never know what you're going to see. But like I said, when you have children with you, it's always important to bring treats for them. And that's why I'm getting to this educational opportunity that we have here at Starf Rock. We talked about the state tree being an oak, and we talked about the flower. Uh, it's, a, it's a violet. And so we have all those things right here at Starf Rock. Now, here we are at Eagle Cliff, and you never know what you're going to see when you get up here. You might see a very beautiful big bird. Are we going to be lucky, Dan? I don't know. Yes. White pelicans. There are hundreds and hundreds of them here. And where we are right now, we're overlooking the lock and dam at the Illinois Waterway Visitor Center, where barges lock through the dam and pass from one part of the river to the other. And there is a barge locking through right now as we speak. They actually separate. You can see the tug going through first ahead of us, and then his cargo is behind him. And then in the foreground, you'll see these white birds. They actually have a wingspan of over three feet. They have big yellow beaks, and they're called pelicans. They never used to migrate through here, but now they do because of Hurricane Katrina. They were thrown off course to the next natural bird highway, and this is called the Mississippi Flyway right here. And so we actually see these pelicans here in the spring and the fall, but it's almost summer now, and they're still here, so I think they like it here. And pretty soon, we may see some here year-round. That would be really cool. This, where we're at right now, is called Eagle Cliff. And needless to say, it's one of the best places in the park to see eagles. Let's just walk over here and show you this panoramic view of the amazing Illinois River Valley below. This is one of our favorite places in the park. In fact, we consider this to be the absolute best view in all of Star Rock State Park. Here you see the whole wide waters of the Illinois River. And over there, you'll actually see eagles in flight. They, you can see eagles in flight year-round. And maybe, maybe, Dan, we'll get lucky enough to see an eagle today while we're here. Does anybody so. see one? Needless to say, too, this is absolutely gorgeous in the fall. When these trees turn colors, you just see a palette of yellow and brown and orange. It's absolutely wonderful. The question is, when is the best time of year to see an eagle? The best time of year to see an eagle is in the winter usually after January, between January and February. That's why at Star Rock Lodge, we have eagle watching trolley tours. Dan, what is that? It can't be. It can't be? It can't be? It is. <laughs> bald, bald eagles are actually here year-round. We have some nesting pairs right here in LaSalle County, and that's where we are today. So if you're looking for a fun day trip, come on out to the Illinois Waterway Visitor Center. That's some of the best educational uh, programming available too on water safety as well as talks that they give people on how the waterway works and how barges lock through. It's very interesting. So once again, we're high atop the Illinois River on Eagle Cliff, the fourth of four bluffs that stick up out of the Illinois River. And now what we're going to do is walk down to Wildcat Canyon and see what everybody comes to Starbuck to see, which are our waterfalls. Now let me make it clear, the waterfalls are seasonal and contingent on rain. Luckily, this spring, we've had a lot of rain, so the waterfalls are active even today, and it's, you know, mid-June. So that's what I like about coming to Star Rock. You can come here every day. It's different every single day of the year. When you come in the spring, the waterfalls are prolific because there's a lot of spring rain. When you come in the summer, everything's all greened up. Obviously, the fall colors are stunning, but the surprise in the winter is when these waterfalls freeze. We have 18 canyons here to see, and about seven or eight of them have waterfalls. And the more rain that we have, of course, the more active these waterfalls are. So let's get back to the wildlife that lives here. We have beavers, fox, we have white-tailed white deer, raccoons. Uh, there's a, a bunch of wildlife that lives here. What we want to be a, a, aware of, though, is don't feed the wildlife. They love french fries, but don't give them to them. Okay, so if you're hiking with a dog, please bring water for your dog so that your dog stays cool on a hot day like this. And never leave your dog in the car. All right, so we're going to head down now and hope that we see some water when we get there. I've worked here at Star Rock for 10 years. But what I wanted to tell you is that my grandmother worked at the lodge and my mother worked here too. And when I was in college, we had our botany final here. When you look around in these woods right here, you could see during the course of April to October over 200 different kinds of wildflowers. That's pretty amazing. So this place is a lesson in botany, geology, geography, and many other 
interesting subjects that you can teach your children about. So if you're looking for a great day trip, I think Starbucks is a great day trip. But what I want to tell you is that it's more than a day trip because now that we have all these guided tours, trolley tours, guided hikes, you have to stay the night. So if you come, we recommend you stay at Starbuck Lodge, and that's where I work. So now, once again, we're heading down to Wildcat Canyon, and we're on a boardwalk. This makes the hike much easier, and it's cool and shady here. We want to teach you how to go away and down the stairs so you don't have to climb up this, which is the backside of Jacob's Ladder. Sometimes it's really fun just to stop and listen to the wildlife here in the park. You can hear birds tweeting. There are over 200 different birds that migrate through here during the year. And so if you're into birding, I hear that it's one of the fastest growing uh, leisure time sports. And all you really need to, to be a good bird watcher is a good pair of binoculars. And if you don't have binoculars, you can rent them at the visitor center at Star Rock State Park. Just leave your driver's license behind, and they'll share the binoculars with you. And we actually have another question. Guy is talking about the beavers, asking if there's any problems with dams. No, I don't. I don't think there are any problems with dams. In fact, the um, Department of Natural Resources takes as good of care of this park as they possibly can. And if that becomes a problem, they take care of it. But in a minute, when we get down here, we might actually see some activity from some beavers. But um, we're just respectful of all the wildlife that lives here in the park. So one of the best things that you can do when you take off to go hiking here, follow the signs and know that the trail markers here face due north. The maps face due north. And if you're taking pictures in the park, please be aware that we don't want to post pictures of people doing things they shouldn't be doing. Please don't go rock climbing or swimming in the park. But please do share your pictures. We have a Snapchat filter. Hashtag it, Star Rock State Park, Star Rock Lodge. We would love to see your pictures on social media. So below us now as we hike, we have sand. We have beaches in our park, although there's no swimming here. The sand that's below our feet wasn't brought in here by a truck. This is sand that naturally occurs here from Starved Rock. When it rains, the water runs off, and it makes these nice sand-covered paths. The sand that's here is an extremely fine grit sand, and it's called St. Peter Sandstone. Now, as we hike down this... This trail here, you can see the river right in front of us. So we know that we're hitting, heading toward the river trail. And that's one of the best ways to get to the backside and into Wildcat Canyon. <clears throat> the Illinois River has a lot of barge traffic on it. At any point in time, you can see barges, pleasure boats, kayaks, paddle boats like the Spirit of Peoria, I, at one point, I saw five different boats at one time on the river. So it's a really important place for people to have fun and also to move uh, cargo like grain and coal. So now we're swinging around to one of the most beautiful places in the park. I just love this part of Star Rock. When you look up here, you can see the sandstone and see what Star Rock is actually made of. It's a strata that has happened over years and years and years of compression. And the way that the glaciers form these canyons here is just a geological miracle to me because we're surrounded by flatlands and you just don't expect this kind of topography in the middle of Illinois. So that's why if you've been to Chicago and you've seen the sites that are to be seen in Chicago and you're looking for a great destination beyond Chicago, Star Rock State Park is a wonderful place to visit and stay the night. <laughs> 